Pelvic organ prolapse is a condition where the support to the pelvic organs is lost and parts of the organs fall into or through the vaginal canal. It is a common condition that is most often noted in women who have had vaginal births. Prolapse may or may not bother women. Bothersome symptoms include pressure or bulge and feelings of incomplete emptying of urine or stool. Management options for pelvic organ prolapse include observation, pessary, and surgery. Pessaries and surgery are offered once the prolapse is bothersome to women. Women who are not bothered by the prolapse can be safely managed by monitoring the condition. As previously mentioned, the vagina can be separated into three different sections or compartments, anterior or front, posterior or back, and central or top. Normal support of each vaginal section contributes to the support of other organs. Note that the vagina is bordered by the bladder, rectum, and uterus at each of the sections. Loss of support of the front or anterior vaginal compartment can result in the bladder descending or falling into the vaginal canal and sometimes through the vaginal opening. This is also known as cystocele. Similarly, loss of support of the back or posterior vaginal compartment can result in the displacement of the rectum into the vaginal canal and sometimes through the vaginal opening. This is also known as rectocele. Lastly, loss of support of the top or central compartment of the vagina can lead to a downward displacement of the cervix and uterus into the vaginal canal or through the vaginal opening. This is called uterovaginal prolapse. Women who have had their uterus removed in a surgery called a hysterectomy can also experience loss of support of the top compartment of the vagina. This is known as post-hysterectomy vaginal vault prolapse. In these cases, portions of the small intestines can often be found just above the prolapsed vaginal walls. It is common for the different sections of the vagina to lose support simultaneously. Frequently, prolapse of the front and or back sections of the vagina are associated with loss of support of the top section. So, evaluating and treating loss of support of the top compartment is a critical step to any prolapse exam and surgery. Your doctor can tell you if you have pelvic organ prolapse by performing a detailed pelvic exam. To determine if you have prolapse of the top compartment, your doctor will first measure the length of your vaginal canal at rest and then measure the change of its length with you bearing down. If you have not had a hysterectomy, he or she will also assess the position of your cervix relative to the vaginal opening. In prolapse where the bladder descends into or through the vaginal opening, the urethra may be displaced or kinked. This kinking effect on the urethra may mask or conceal a condition known as stress urinary incontinence. Stress urinary incontinence is characterized by leakage of urine with activities such as coughing, sneezing, and exercising. In many women, stress urinary incontinence may manifest after correction of the prolapse when the urethra is straightened. For this reason, when considering surgery for prolapse, your doctor may recommend a bladder test known as a urodynamic study to evaluate the potential for stress urinary incontinence after correction of the prolapse. In summary, there are three vaginal sections or compartments, and loss of support of any of these can lead to bothersome pelvic organ prolapse. Prolapse of more than one compartment is common and usually involves the top compartment.